Hi everyone, my name is Gonçalo Banha. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Vault Games. Uh, first of all, let me thank you, Moby Dingo, for having me. It's a pleasure to me to talk about this new trending topic, which is NFTs. I will also talk about uh, how NFTs are changing all the industries, and more specific, the gaming one. Uh, so, just to give you a little bit of context, uh, I've been passionate about games my entire life. I, I've played since I was a little kid. I then joined uh, the, the university. I studied computer science. I have a computer science master degree. And it was on the university that I also learned that I really like to code. So I started developing some games. I started working with some Chinese publishers. Uh, and in 2020, January, I understood that it is better to walk with friends than walk alone. So uh, me and three friends of mine founded Vault Games. Uh, we started as an hyper-casual studio. A year later, we launched our uh, in-house game, which is Football Clash, that has 200,000 uh, 200, monthly active users. It is a more casual game. And since last year and the end of the last year, we have started uh, studying we have started studying uh, NFTs, blockchain games, and we are now developing uh, a blockchain game that I will show a sneak peek at the end of the slide or the presentation. But let's get this started. So in the last two years, uh, 2020 and 2021, there were a lot of crazy things happening on the internet. There were a lot of digital assets that were being, being sold for thousands and thousands. Just to give a quick example, NBA sold and is still selling some clips that are available on the internet for thousands of dollars. The first tweet ever uh, that was made back in 2006 for almost 14 years ago uh, was sold for $2 million. And this PNG, this image was sold for 600,000. So, which is a little bit hard because this picture uh, it is available on, on the internet and anyone can copy and paste it like I just did on this presentation. So why are people willing to spend millions of dollars in something that is already available on the internet? And as you might sus sus suspect, uh, the answer to this is NFTs. Uh, if you don't live under a rock, you have heard about NFTs. Everyone has that one friend that it is always talking about NFTs. Uh, well, I'm that friend today. Uh, it gained massive popularity on social media like Twitter and Reddit. And besides all the popularity, people don't really understand the hype around NFTs and what can be done and then the opportunities, the opportunities that the NFTs bring. So let's start with the most obvious question, which is what is an, an NFT? Uh, an NFT is a non-fungible token which doesn't really help because if you didn't know what NFT means, you still don't know what non-fungible token means. So let's break the, this expression and let's start with the middle. So fungible, what is fungible? Uh, fund fungible is a very specific word that is used by economists. It means something that can be replaced by another identical item. So something that it is not unique and can be replaced. So let's just use replaceable instead of fungible. And if fungible is replaceable, then obviously uh, non-fungible is a non-replaceable item, uh, which means that it is an item that it is unique because no one or no other item can replace it. And uh, I think that uh, people understand better in examples uh, like I do myself. So. Just to give you an, a quick example, imagine that you want to buy uh, a soda can for $10. Uh, first of all, it would be a very expensive soda can, uh, at least for Portugal. Secondly, when you want to buy a soda can for that amount of money or any money, uh, you don't care if you are getting the left one, the middle one, or the right one. You just want to pay $10 and you, you want to get one soda. It doesn't matter 
uh, which soda can you are bringing home. So this is an example of a fungible or replaceable item because it doesn't matter which one it is, you will be happy. On the right side, and imagine that your daughter or your son wrote a really cute message on, on the soda can saying that, I love you, Dad. Uh, from, from that moment, that soda can is no longer replaceable because you have a connection with it. You have an emotional value uh, attached to that soda can. So even if someone uh, gave $10 for the soda can, you wouldn't sell it because you don't think that the soda can is no longer replaceable. So this is a non-replaceable item. It's a non-fungible item. And if you think about it, everything in our economy is either one or the other. Uh, everything is either fungible or non-fungible. Like a pack of eggs, uh, which is obviously a fungible item and, and a replaceable item, because again, you don't care if you are getting the left one, the, the left one, the right one, or the one in the back. You just want an egg. It doesn't matter which one. And the most, uh, ex the most easy example on the non-fungible uh, are the paintings. Uh, there is only one Mona Lisa. Uh, it is unique. There's only one in the world. So obviously, uh, it is a non-fungible item because uh, it is unique. So with the non-fungible part explained, uh, we are missing the token one. The token is a little bit uh, more trickier to, to explain or trickier to explain because it involves uh, a really complex concept which is called blockchain. Uh, but I will try to, to give you some examples of blockchain and I will try to simplify so uh, everyone can, can know uh, a little bit about it. So blockchain is like a giant database uh, that is public to anyone and instead of being stored in only one server, it is stored in multiple servers. Uh, and that makes the, um, that database re uh, reliable because even if one server gets shut down, uh, the, all the data is replicated in the other servers. And that database stores transactions. So it has a similar table like this. Uh, obviously that this, is a lot simpler, but uh, the idea is that it stores transactions from the person A to the person B. So uh, when John sends one Bitcoin to Peter, it will be stored in all of these servers that Peter is uh, one Bitcoin richer and John that no longer has that Bitcoin. But besides storing uh, items like cryptocurrency, it also stores uh, digital assets like NFTs, for example. So in the second row, um, it was stored that Kate sent an NFT with the ID 1321, for example, for Bob. And at the end of the day, we can check this table because it is public. And we can understand that Bob has now one NFT with that specific ID and that Kate no longer has that uh, NFT. And with that explained, we, we already know what is an NFT. So an NFT is a non-fungible token, which means that it is a unique digital item stored in a public database called blockchain. So it is a unique digital item stored in blockchain and anyone can access it. And uh, this makes the NFTs a really unique things and uh, they are usually grouped by collections. So for example, this collection is called Doodles, is one of the most expensive collections in the planet. Um, not the most one, uh, but one of the most. There are 10,000 items, similar items on this collection. As you can see, uh, well, I only have 15 of them, so you have to trust me on this, but as you can see, they all have the same art style, but they are unique. Uh, some of them share some elements like the eyes, for example, or the crown, but all of them are unique. Uh, regarding NFTs and the most important things besides being unique, uh, there are 
a couple of important points to, to talk about. So one of them is the true ownership. Due to the blockchain, uh, anyone can see uh, who's the real owner of an NFT. It is possible to check the history. Uh, it, is, it is also possible to check if a celebrity holds a specific NFT or not, or which NFT is a celebrity uh, own. And that information will live forever in blockchain, and it's going to be public. And that uh, will make the user feel uh, that he really owns the item because that information uh, will live forever and it is public. So he can prove to anyone that he owns the NFT. Uh, NFTs also put an end to those uh, really long and boring contracts, replacing them with smart contracts, which defines the rules. So there are a lot of rules on these smart contracts. Uh, on this example on the right, this is just a really simplified version of it. But as you can see, the most common rules are the limits and royalties. Limits sets how many items will the NFT collection have. So in that last, last example, the doodles, that limit was 10,000. And it also set the royalties. So every time that an NFT is sold from person A to person B, uh, the creator of the NFT will earn some royalties. In this case, it is 4%. Is It is usually uh, 4%. Uh, there are millions of NFTs. Uh, a lot of industries are already working with NFTs in some of their projects. Uh, it all started with art, uh, with it didn't start with, with this collection specifically, but it, this is the most expensive collection in the world. It is called Board A Piat Club. It is a funny collection because uh, anyone who owns this one, of, one NFT of this collection can go to some specific parties like VIP parties in the real world. Uh, there are a lot of celebrities that owns that own uh, NFTs of this collection. Uh, uh, the minimum price for each NFT of this collection is 150k, but obviously the price depends on the demand on, or in or no demand or in supply. Uh, so if there are a lot of users buying the NFTs, uh, the, the price will go up. And if the NFT collection is no longer relevant, the price will go down. Uh, NFTs are also being used in sports, like I like I told before. NBA is already is already selling some clips uh, for thousands of dollars. And this is also being used on other sports and other esports. Uh, gaming, uh, and I will talk about that in, uh, in a bit. And music, there are some artists that are selling um, the, NFT, the albums as NFTs. There was even one uh, artist uh, that sold 1 million copies in 57 seconds, which is uh, crazy. Uh, for me, and one big point of NFTs, and again, this is only my opinion, uh, NFTs should have uh, some kind of utility. Uh, they must have, because otherwise it is just a PNG that doesn't have any purpose. Uh, I think that at least 90% of the NFT projects that are in the market and that don't have any utility will no longer be relevant in two years because everyone wants to buy something with a purpose, with a utility. And there is a really good uh, area in industry where you can make as many digi digital assets as you want uh, and make them usable for the, for the user. Uh, and that's, that is gaming. So NFTs in gaming can be the really next thing uh, because NFTs must have some kind of utility and that's possible in gaming because there are a lot of possibilities as I will, as I will show you later. Uh, this is just some NFT stats regarding, well, uh, NFTs. So... Uh, as you can see, and just for you to have an idea of the market, in 2020, there were uh, $100 million uh, worth of transactions. And one year, one year later, in 2021, that value jumped to $25 billion. 
So this only proves that NFTs are really uh, the next thing and the hype around it is, is crazy. Uh, in gamings, in games, uh, games have 4.8 billion revenue in 2021, 20, which is about 20% of the total revenue. Uh, obviously, that this value will will increase because all the big publishers uh, are now working on some really good uh, blockchain games. So in 2022, uh, I bet that this value will increase a lot. Uh, what could be an NFT uh, in the gaming? So if you think about it, it can be a character because all the characters can be unique. They could have a special power or a special ability. Uh, they can have different stats, like different damage, different difference. So the main character, the main character of the game can be an NFT, dance moves, uh, skins. You can even have on the same collection, some skins that are not that good looking and some skins that are really special. And obviously that the special ones will be more valuable than the, the common ones or the rare ones. Items to customize the environment, uh, items for the player in itself. So it can be uh, swords, it can be guns, it can be anything that is unique. It can be some kind of passes and access passes that will grant the, the player access to a lot of special features. Or imagine that there is a really good feature in the game uh, that can only be accessed for the players that own this pass. And if you are creative, creative enough, uh, it can be anything. Uh, the developer just needs to have some, some imagination. There are a lot of possibilities. Uh, but for this thing to work, uh, there's need to have some benefits for the player because games are made to, to be played. And so we need the players and players need to accept NFTs. So there's a couple of benefits to the players. Uh, the first one is player owns the item. Uh, even if the game gets shut down or if the user stops playing for some reason, uh, the item that the player collected will be available on blockchain forever. So uh, after the game gets shut down, player can sell the NFT if he wants. Uh, player, players also value rarity and authentic, authenticity. Uh, and with the NFTs, it is possible to prove how many items of a certain type uh, exist because everything is public and that they are unique. Uh, Players can prove who owns the NFT. They, they can even prove that they own the NFT because, as I said, blockchain is public. And for me, one of the biggest benefits is that with NFTs, uh, it is possible to have a new game loop inside the game, which is called Play to Earn, that I will explain in a couple of slides. So there are also a lot of benefits for the developers uh, and some opportunities that the developers can take advantage of. Uh, the first one is removing gray market market activity. There, there are a lot of illegal sites and illegal ways of selling uh, items that are not supposed to be sell to be sell, sold, uh, like trading illegal websites like uh, CS:GO trading websites that are not supposed to work because the developers will not have or will not earn any royalties on. On every single on every single sale, uh, it is public. It is possible to eliminate scammers because uh, blockchain is fully deterministic. So if you buy an item and if you pay for the item, you are 100% getting that item on your accounts. Uh, it is an hackable. Uh, the blockchain architecture is probably the big, the best one in terms of security. Uh, so it is pretty unhackable, obviously when done right, because there are a lot of game studios that are trying to rush, to rush uh, blockchain games and that are not working uh, in the best way possible. Uh, with NFTs, it is possible to incentivize the user, like saying, if you win this tournament uh, or whoever wins this tournament will get uh, a special NFT that can then be sold uh, in 
in the marketplace. And that obviously will uh, increase the player retention. Uh, this is the feature that I talked about earlier, earlier, which is called play to earn. For me, this is the next step in gaming. Uh, and as you can uh, know for the name, play to earn is where is when you reward players with real world value. So the more or the better the user plays, you will get either NFTs re related to the games or specific cryptocurrency that can then be sold uh, by fiat currency like US dollar or euro. Uh, this is the biggest play uh, to earn game. Uh, it is. It, it was also the first one. Uh, it is called X Infinity. Uh, it is inspired on Pokemon. It's basically a turn-based PvP card game. Uh, the NFT is the main character, uh, like those three characters on the right. Each one of them is a NFT. They are unique, and the users need three axes to play. Uh, this game is uh, pretty successful. Uh, su successful. Uh, the price or the minimum price of an axe is $21. Uh, they have 2 million daily active users. And the total trading volume on this game is 3.8 billion uh, since uh, 2018. Uh, they have a token. They have two tokens, but uh, this specific to token, the SLP, uh, it is an in-game token that it is available on Binance and can be traded by fiat currency. Uh, the users uh, can earn this token, as I said, and because of the play-to-earn loop, uh, winning battles give players SLP tokens and daily quests also give player, players SLP tokens. So the users can benefit and can earn some cryptocurrency that can then be exchanged to real to, to fiat currency uh, just by playing the game. Uh, there, there is also another game, which is not game, but a giant project, which is called The Sandbox. It is the most uh, hyped project uh, on the NFT industry. It has, it's basically an open world with a lot of uh, islands that everyone can access. Uh, they have a lot of partnerships with giant brands like uh, Adidas, Snoop Dogg, Walking Dead, uh, the game is not even launched yet, and in the last seven days, there were almost 700 NFTs that were sold. Uh, 9.2k is the average price for each NFT, and uh, in the last seven days again, they made 5.1 million dollars in trading volume, which is crazy. And this game is just the, be the beginning for the multiverse, where there are a possibility where users use the same items in multiple games and. Like in this example, if you can create an NFT that can be used on game A, game B, and game C, uh, obviously that NFT will have more utility and it will be more valuable because, well, uh, it has more than one purpose. Uh, in Vault, uh, I told you before the, the loop was called Play to Earn, but in Vault, we, we believe it should be called uh, and be called Play in Earn. Uh, there's a reason behind that. Basically, play to earn means that the user only play the game to earn currency, and that's not the purpose of the games. The games must must be fun. Uh, so we believe in fun game first and earning as a bonus. So you don't play to earn, you play and you earn cryptocurrency uh, as a bonus. Uh, this is our project. Uh, just giving a little bit of self-promotion here. So it is Metastar Strikers. It's still in the early stage of development. It will be a football game uh, built on the blockchain. It will have NFTs. It will have play and earn. So uh, I can't wait to, to show you a little bit more uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, just follow Vault Games and I will, I, I will share some updates on it. Okay, so just to sum up also i will have some time for questions so if you have any question uh, please start writing them now so i can uh, answer them uh, to sum up this is just the tip of the iceberg regarding nfts uh, i think gaming is going to be such an insane place in the next five to seven years 
uh, there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, imagine that you can, in a couple of years, you can play a game that you really love, you truly love, uh, and you are also earning NF uh, NFTs and cryptocurrency as a bonus. Uh, this is the potential of the NFTs. Uh, I think this is going to be probably the biggest uh, thing in the gaming industry in the next 10 years. Uh, and it's still very early stages, so anyone can join. And again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so we have one, how to publish NFT game on mobile. There are a couple of ways and there are a couple of solutions at the moment. So first of all, Apple and Google Play are already keen of checking NFT games and see if they are worth to publish on mobile. Uh, right now, it is possible to publish on mobile, uh, on Google Play and on App Store, but it is not possible to buy an NFT in mobile. So you have to go to a web app, like a website, uh, buy the NFT outside the, the game, and then you go back to the game. But I'm pretty sure, and all the industry feels the same, that in a couple of years, uh, NFTs uh, will be the biggest thing happening in gaming. So Apple and Google Play will find a way and already, and they are already working on some solutions uh, to, to mitigate this problem. Uh, yeah, do, do you think scams in the NFT world will affect the possession of NFT gaming? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, like, unfortunately, uh, it is really early stages in NFT. So there are a lot of scammers that try to get some money, some fast money with NFTs. And obviously that will affect uh, the NFT gaming. And that's why uh, some players don't want NFTs to be into the game because they all think it is a scam. But our mission and the mission of all the game, all of the biggest game publishers in the world is to make NFTs with utility and with some some purpose so to let to let the users know that nfts are not a scam and nfts are actual beneficial for the players uh, when i mean when cryptocurrency uh, got some hype uh, it also it was all, all the people thought it was a scam but right now uh, everyone uses cryptocurrency uh, so I think that's it from my side. Again, uh, I want to thank you all for being here with me. I want to thank you once again, Mobbing, to for having me and have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye-bye.